In this video, we're gonna discuss the solution to question 11 from the practice final exam for math 1220, in which case we're asked to consider the first order linear differential equation 2xy plus x cubed is equal to x dy over dx. And no, this question actually comes with two parts. The first part is just to compute the integrating factor associated to this linear equation. And then we're gonna use that integrating factor to solve the, the differential equation. Now to recognize the, the integrating factor, it probably is helpful to put this differential equation in standard form. For a linear differential equation, it should look something like y prime plus p of x times y is equal to q of x. So we need the y and the y prime to be on the same side. So we're gonna move the 2xy to the other side. This gives us that xy prime minus 2xy equals x cubed. Then we need the coefficient of y prime just to be a one, so divide everything by x. Make sure you do it evenly there. In which case, then we'll get y prime minus just two y is equal to x squared. And so when we standardize this linear equation, we get this equation, y prime minus two y equals uh, x squared. And therefore, the function px is just given as negative two. Don't forget the sign, the sign's part of it as well. And the fact that it's a constant is not a big deal. Um, to calculate the integrating factor, we have to, after identifying this function p of x, we have to integrate this thing. So integrate with respect to x right here. This will give us negative two x plus c. Now, admittedly, if you forget the plus c, it's not such a big deal because for the integrating factor, it doesn't matter what the constant is. So for simplicity, we usually set it equal to zero. Um, and so this will be one of the few times ever that I would allow you to omit the plus C without any penalty whatsoever. Uh, for the integrating factor I of X, we're gonna take E to the integral of P of X. And this could be any antiderivative, doesn't matter which one it is. And so we end up with E to the negative two X. And it is helpful to put a box around your answer or something. So it's very clear to the greater, uh, which what, what is your integrating factor? So we identified E to the negative two X. So now when we go to the next part of the question, we're gonna take the equation we had from before, y prime minus two y, this is equal to x squared. We're gonna times the left-hand side by e to the negative two x, the integrating factor. We're gonna times the right-hand side by that as well. So we're actually solving the differential equation using the integrating factor. Um, now on the right-hand side, um, you distribute it through you distribute it through e to the negative two x y prime minus two e to the negative two x y. On the right hand side, there's really no simplification to do there. x squared times e to the negative two x. And we have to integrate this, these bad boys. On the right hand side, we integrate. Um, we integrate the left hand side as well. That is an x right there. Which of course, do notice here, uh, on the right hand side, because of the integrating factor, the right hand side is actually gonna to simplify to be a derivative, right? Uh, so the left hand side, it simplifies to be e to the negative two x y prime is equal to x squared e to the negative two x. Like so, right? And so this is the situation which we want to integrate for which the right hand, uh, the left hand side, because we're integrating a derivative, um, we're trying to find the antiderivative of a derivative, that is to say, um, we're gonna end up with e to negative two x y. The left hand side will simplify very nicely. It always will simplify to be the integrating factor times y. The right hand side takes a little bit more effort, right? And that's often the case here. We have to integrate x squared e to negative two x dx. Uh, on this one, I feel like integration by parts is probably the direction we want to go here uh, because we have this, this power function times the exponential. We'll set u equal to x squared so that when we take the derivative, the power will get smaller. So we get two x dx. And then we're gonna set the, the exponential as the dv, e to the negative two x dx. Because whether you take the derivative or antiderivative of the exponential, it's gonna be basically the same thing we end up with negative one half e to the negative two x like so. And so when you put those things together on the right hand side, you're gonna get negative x squared e to the negative two x over two. And then we're gonna get a positive, the integral of x e to the negative two x dx. Um, in that case, the one half and the two cancel out. 
and the, the usual the usual negative sign that shows up with the uh, integration by parts formula also uh, it becomes a plus here because it's a it's a double negative in that situation. So now we have to we have to evaluate the integral of x e to the negative two x. This will be very similar to what we just did a moment ago, and your integration by parts will be very similar. It, it should it should be u equals the uh, u, u equals the monomial because every time you take the derivative, it decreases by one. Du will become dx, and then anti-differentiate the exponential again. Don't swap the roles. Dv equals e to the negative two x dx. So v equals again negative one half e to the negative two x. So putting all of those things in there, we get that e to the negative two x y equals x squared e to the negative two x over 2. Uh, that should be a negative x squared there. And then uh, doing this next one, we're going to get another u and v. So we get a minus x e to the negative 2x over 2 again. And now finally, we're going to get a plus. Again, there's a double negative there. Integral uh, of 1 half e to the negative 2x dx. And so this last one, we have to do the integral one more time. Uh, we've done the antiderivative of e to the negative 2x enough times, we should probably be pretty comfortable with it. e to the negative 2xy equals negative x squared e to the negative 2x over 2. Just copying things down from above. Negative x e to the negative 2x over 2. And then finally, we're going to get a negative 1 fourth, because you get another 1 half that combines with the 1 half that's already there, e to the negative 2x. And now you do need your plus c plus a constant here. And so we're in the very convenient situation that when you divide by e to the negative 2x, you're going to divide everything over here by e to the negative 2x as well. And so it's just going to be a lot of cancellation. And so in the end, we end up with y, y equals, oops, y equals, we're going to get a negative x squared over 2 because the e to the negative 2x canceled out in that situation when we divided it through, then we're going to go minus x over 2, same thing, the e to the negative 2x cancels out, then we're going to get a minus 1 fourth, same reason as before, right, the e to the negative 2x cancels out, but in this situation, then we're going to get c times e to the 2x, like so, because if you divide by a net, by e to the negative 2x, that, that negative exponent of the denominator is redundant, so it comes up, it becomes a positive and therefore, we now have the solution to our differential equation, uh, which you now see highlighted right here. Uh, y equals negative 1 half x squared minus 1 half x minus 1 fourth plus c, some arbitrary constant, times e to the 2x. We do not have an initial value, so we can't determine what that constant is. We'll just leave it as an arbitrary constant for this one. And this shows us how to solve this differential equation using integrating factors. Now be aware that if since this is a two-part question, um, if your first part was correct, but then the second part you made some mistakes, you still of course gonna get credit for the first one, and then you might get some partial credit on part B based upon what the error was. Now on the other hand, if you calculated the incorrect integrating factor on part A, but then use that incorrect integrating factor correctly for part B solving the differential equation, if your solution is correct based upon the incorrect integrating factor, you can still get full points for part B even though you lost some points on part A. And that's one of the reasons why this is broken up into two parts, to try to protect uh, your score based upon some potential errors that one could make. But of course, if you have a correct integrating factor and you solved it correctly, you would get the full points right there. Um, this version of the question is certainly on the harder side because you had to do integration for parts twice, but be prepared uh, with these integration techniques to solve uh, a linear differential equation for this final exam.